Hi, I'm James C. Harmon, candidate for president 2016. I'm not the media's choice, but that's the problem with this country. We've had too many people picked for the office of the presidency by the media and large business concerns. It's time for a common everyday working man who knows what it is to live paycheck to paycheck, day to day, working himself as hard as he can, putting calluses on his hands, to understand what it is that you do out there every day, what you live with, what you put up with, who's learned the things that you, the common everyday working man, has learned. Until we put a man like that in office, we'll never have someone who's going to do something to help you, the people. It's time for the people of this country once again to gain control. It's time for the people of this country to run and own their country again. It's time for the politicians to stop telling the lies they tell that they call promises, political promises, and tell the truth. Tell that they may try to do this or they may try to do that. I'm telling you that I'm going to use the experience that I have as a common everyday working man, going from being utterly poor to being fairly well to do by the grace of God. I'm going to take those things that I've learned, that I've been taught by living the life rather than listen to people tell me about the life. And I will try and make things happen that will make life better for you. I'm going to work at trying to change this nation back to what this nation was originally meant to be. Trying to get it back to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights because we as citizens of this country and as citizens of the world were endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights. Rights that no one can take away. We can only give them away. Over the last 100 years, we've given too many of them away. It's time for the common everyday man to stand up and say, no more. It ends here. In 2016, we need to elect a president that knows what it is to be a common everyday working man, that knows what it is to live from paycheck to paycheck, that knows what it is to wonder when your child is going to have his next meal to wonder when he's going to be able to make his house payment, to know what it is to choose between paying the insurance on the automobile or buying food to put on the table for his child, wondering if he's going to get a job, if he's going to get food stamps, or whatever it is that he's out there looking for, whatever he needs. This country is in a bad way, and it's going to take someone who has lived the life not someone who just talks about it, to make changes that will affect you and I in a good way. Because if a man says he doesn't know what it is to be hungry because he's never been hungry, I can't blame him for not understanding what hunger is. I can, however, know that that man can say, I'm not going to eat for a month with the money that I have in the bank. I'll just do what I can to come up with food. And at the end of that month, he'll know what the hunger in his belly is. But I know that at the end of that month, he still won't understand hunger because he knows he can go to the bank at the end of that month and get the money and buy his lobster and steak or whatever it is he wants to eat. He won't know the pain in a man's heart where he wonders about when his child is going to get what it needs. When he wonders, is he going to have a job come his way or if he's going to have to stand on the street corner and beg. I know from experience what it is to have to ask for spare change to feed my wife and child because I went nine months without a job and I was searching. I wasn't sitting at home drawing my paycheck for unemployment just to draw a paycheck. I was out there knocking door to door, house to house, business to business, trying to find a way to support my family. And some of those times it took me standing and asking for spare change to feed my child. I understand what it feels like to do that. And I feel bad for those people that have to do it. I don't pity them, but I want to give them a hand up. I don't believe in handouts. I believe that's one of the major problems in this country. We have to go to hand ups and not handouts. We have to teach people to have pride in themselves and we have to create jobs. If given the chance, I know how to create jobs. One thing is we have to bring business back to the United States. We have to begin to think about our people 
before we think of others. Once we take care of our own people, then we can start looking to help everybody else. But we can't spread ourselves too thin. I know it's my Christian obligation to help people all over the world. But maybe that help comes in a form of showing them how and not doing for them. I do know, however, that it's not right for us to continue to give money out to our enemies, for our enemies to use to buy weapons to fight against us. And in the meantime, going out and slaughtering innocent people over there. I'm seeing too many people killed in Iraq, Syria, Libya, because of people who don't care about anything except their ideology, killing people. The main difference in Islam and Christianity in the application of those religions is that the Christians say anybody can be whatever they want to be. But we want to tell you what we believe. Islam says if you try to be something different from what we tell you we're going to be, we, we want you to be, we're going to cut your head off. We're going to kill you. We're going to burn you. We're going to drown you. And they've done it on the internet with ISIS multiple times over the last couple of years. It's time we step up and say no more. It's time to Atlas shrug and say it ends here. It ends today. Well, in 2016, we can do that. We need to put a president in the White House that will say this is a Christian nation and if you want to be a Muslim or if you want to be an atheist or if you want to be a Scientologist or whatever you want to be, that's fine. But you're not going to interfere with our rights to be Christians. That's what this nation was built on. In 1892, the Supreme Court stood up. They did an exhaustive study for over 10 months and came back and made their conclusion that this was a Christian nation based on Christian principles, by Christian people, it was formed. It's time that all the Christians in this nation once again stand up, put God first, and take this nation back for God. I ask that you keep me in mind. Write letters to the news media. Talk to everyone you know and tell them there is a common man running for the office. I have got a two-year technical college education, but I've got a 50-year work education. I went to work when I was nine years old, and I haven't quit since. So I've learned from the School of Hard Knocks. I'm asking that you keep me in mind, and you think about me as you talk to other people. And when it's time to go into the voters' booth, if they have me on the ballot, Pull that lever for James Harmon because it's pulling a lever for yourself. And if they don't have a lever, then you're to take and write my name in. Write it in because I'm going to stand up for you and I'm going to do what God says is right. And I'm going to honor each and every person, giving them the respect that they deserve as human beings. And I thank you for listening to me. God bless and have a good day. Let's make America great for real. Thank you.